What's going on everyone? It's me alone. Back after taking a bit of a break from YouTube. It was the Christmas break and I was seeing my family, focusing on myself. And also I was in a bit of a conundrum in terms of the video content that I wanted to produce on the channel. But I finally thought of something that I think I can become very passionate about. But before we get to that, I want to make one small change. So we finally got in a brand new camera for my YouTube channel. The difference in quality is absolutely night and day. It's an actual proper camera rather than my Logitech webcam. So I hope you appreciate the bump up in quality. But for now, let's get to the video. I've said for many years that Fallout 3 is my absolute favorite video game of all time. It's a big reason why I started this channel. It's a big reason why I got into Fallout games and Bethesda games. And it's something that I keep coming back to. But I think the content on my channel over the years has had a distinct lack of Fallout 3. And it's funny being my favorite video game of all time that I never really covered it that much. But I do want to change that. I do want to go back to this game and explore it in much more detail. Because even though I've played this game several times through, gotten all the achievements, there's always something new to discover. And I feel that I've never gone through the game in a structured way to try and find every single little thing that it does have to offer. So why not do that, but in a video series format? This is something that I've been tossing around in my head for probably years now, and I've never been able to fine tune the concept. And we've had some past attempts at it in the past, but I wanna give it a fresh go now, see whether you like it, and if you do, I will try and continue this. So with all that out of the way, let's get to it. This is Fallout 3 Secrets Explored. Alrighty, so we start in Vault 101 where you begin your game and it's your 10th birthday and one small secret that I found that I never really noticed before is on this notice board here. When you read it, it says the following. Wednesday's bingo night in the diner. First prize, a week's supply of water rations and then it's got a bingo ball here with the number 13. And if you remember in the first Fallout game, Vault 13 is the vault that had an issue with its water supply because the water chip was broken. I thought that was pretty cool. Snakes are cool, right? The vault snakes. What do you guys think? Thank you for coming, Miss Beatrice. Maybe. I hope you're having a nice time. So I don't know if you overheard that, but before we leave this room here, you can see Butch talking to Wally about what they should name their crew. And this is when they start thinking about attaching snakes to what becomes the tunnel snakes. I never stuck around this long to notice this conversation, but they thought Vault Snakes was a cool name and they settled on Tunnel Snakes, I guess. Alrighty, so now we're in the Vault Overseas office before leaving Vault 101. And while there may not necessarily be secrets on the terminal, there's still a bunch of interesting information that, if you take the time to read, is actually a little bit of fun. So um, if you go here to the scouting reports, you'll know that, yes, people have left Vault 101 before to do some scouting to see what the outside area is like. And they went to Springvale and they also went to Megaton. In fact, if you re read this report here, it's, it says that they actually left two people in Megaton to report and to send back information to the vaults. And funnily enough, the person that, are, that is doing or heading these scout parties is Anne Palmer, who is the daughter of Mrs. Palmer, who gave you the sweet, sweet roll uh, when it was your 10th birthday, which is pretty cool. Um, and then some photos there of the um, photos that they took when they did the scouting party. And then if you go here, the vault tech instructions, you will actually see a letter from Dr. Stanislas Braun. You will know who he is, but we'll cover him in a bit more detail if we continue the series. Um, but what's interesting is if you read the letter from Dr. Stanislas S. Braun, it will mention that whether your vault gets a gek or not will be determined by the attachment you receive. And attachment A, you'll see that Vault 101 never received a gek, and this is confirmation of that. But even so, um, there's still another entry here which explains what the gek is. So at least those other vaults which didn't get a gek still know what the gek is and, and how it operates, talking about how it's a terraforming device. So I think that's pretty cool. But let's continue anyway. And finally, we are outside of Vault 101, the opening that I think a lot of people love. I absolutely adore it where you get to go to the scenic overlook and see what the Capital Wasteland has to offer. And the first step that we'll be taking once outside of Vault 101 is Springvale. 
Alrighty, so now that we're in Springvale, one of the first things I always like to look at are the letters from the vault that are contained in these mailboxes. Of course, these used to be houses, <laughs> once upon a time, and they're very close to the vault. And some of these citizens, of course, went to Vault 101 when the Great War happened, um, and they were invited by vault -Tec. So if we read this particular letter here by going to notes, it says the following. Dear Safety Conscious Citizen, we are writing to inform you that your family was not selected for inclusion in your chosen vault facility. Your deposit has been retained and your application added to a waiting list for your preferred vault. In the interest of your family's security in the event of a minor nuclear event, please consider relocating to one of these areas where vault facilities are available without a waiting list. For a full list of vault facilities with available accommodations in exciting locales such as Oklahoma and newly annexed Canada, contact your local vault representative. vault wishes you and your family the best of luck in the uncertain future. Best regards, vault Public Relations Department in Washington, D.C. And there are some of these um, letters, once we find them, that um, are acceptance letters, people that successfully got into Vault 101. Um, so I just, you know, it's a little bit of lore that I was like reading once you exit the vault to know which of these people likely survived and which one didn't. Alrighty, next up we got this house here, and this is something that we can't fully explore yet because it's part of the Broken Steel DLC. Um, but this cellar door leads to the Holy Light Monastery, uh, which I think is pretty cool that it's here so early on. But right now we need a key and we don't have access to it. Alrighty, so before we get to Springvale Elementary, we have one more stop to make, which is this house here. And the reason why we're stopping is because in this letterbox, we have another letter from vault -Tec. And this one is actually addressed to Mr. and Mrs. Gomez. Now, as you remember, Gomez was one of the security officers in Vault 101. Now, this is a different Mr. Gomez, obviously, because the Great War was hundreds of years ago, as was this letter, of course. Uh, but it's still cool to see that this letter was addressed to his family who used to live here. You know, this used to be his family home before the Great War. We won't read this letter because it's a little long, but you get the point of it. They were accepted into Vault 101, and then eventually we got Gomez, who decided to not attack us. I think that's pretty neat. Alrighty, Way Sanders, that's all from me. Please let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. I know it's a little bit short, but I just wanted to get it out there, get it done, to see if this concept worked, to see if I liked making the video, and to see whether I could make this into a full series. So let me know if you would like that. And until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourself. And would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.